Welcome back to the channel guys. If you're new to the channel, thank you very much for stopping by. Consider subscribing if you find value from the content. If you are a regular viewer, thank you again for returning to the channel. Guys, let's get into Bitcoin today. Obviously, we've seen it spike up to $33,000. We're going to go through the charts and, of course, the news today. Let's take a look at some of the Bitcoin news that's coming out and potentially some of the fundamental reasons as to why we're seeing a spike on Bitcoin price. Like every other video, if you find value from it, hit me in the likes down below. It does go a massive way to helping out the channel in the YouTube algorithm. All right. Without further ado, let's take a quick look at Bitcoin market cap and previous videos that I've got on the channel. So yesterday I got uh, Bitcoin flips Buffett and then some goal setting as well. So if you guys are into goal setting, getting your finances in check this year, definitely check out that video there. Okay, coin market cap, all the cryptocurrencies. Highlighted Bitcoin again, $607 billion market cap, 32,669. Of course, we hit a high of around 333 as well. $33,333 high on Bitstamp. I don't know who's putting in those orders, but that's what we've hit so far. Now, we're getting very close to flipping Tesla. Yesterday, we flipped Berkshire. That's why I got Bitcoin flips Buffett. Today, we're getting close to flipping Tesla, Elon Musk, $669 billion market cap. Bitcoin, we're at $607 billion market cap. Let's take a look at the chart as well. So I do put a lot of technical analysis videos up on my channel, so uh, check those out as well. I've been getting into the news the last couple of days just to start to piece some of the fundamentals together with the technicals. Often I find channels just do all of the fundamentals. We just look at all the news and then you don't really get a understanding, a feel for what's going on. You just get overly hyped on the news. And right now, it, the news is, is great everywhere. The, the narrative at the moment, as we'll see with the news articles, is that the, sh there is a shortage supply on Bitcoin. Obviously, we know this mathematically. There's only 21 million Bitcoin, but even more so now when we look at some of the liquid and illiquid numbers of Bitcoin floating around out there. So quickly on the chart here, uh, this was yesterday's bar, the 2nd of January. Today is the 3rd of January, so this is the start of today's data. Volume is very high as we break through those high levels. I think we're going to see, I, I could shoot myself in the foot here, that's absolutely fine. Personally, I have been doing my buying early on. I did a lot of it through this area here as I saw the breakout up here. I did buy a chunk back here at around six, even five grand actually, that was for my retirement fund. But I did do a lot of buying up through this level as it broke through the 10,000 and a little bit through here, again through here. So I'm saying that because I am not emotionally tied to this price of 33 grand. I don't need to make my first purchase up here. And I can, I'm happy to see this thing go to 40 grand, 45 grand. It doesn't concern me because I still believe we'll see a very strong pullback and Basically, probably not much happening for January, February, March, something like that. Maybe two months, maybe one month, six weeks, but there will come a period where not much will happen. So let's take a look back at 2017. And this was the area that I first got into Bitcoin. And that was around that March, April time through here. And basically, we saw the top get taken out. This is the old all-time high of 2013. There's a top. Now, I'm bringing this up because of the market sentiment, the feeling, what's going on. And then what happened after that is that the market just took off and we went all the way to close to $3,000 for a Bitcoin after having sat in $900, $1,000 per Bitcoin. So it basically doubled, tripled up to $3,000. And then what happened is we took several days, weeks actually, to recover from that and then start to move again. This period was so long for a lot of people. This Everyone thought this was the end. I definitely thought this was the end because I'd never sat through a Bitcoin bull market before, especially an emerging economy or emerging asset class that can go on these monster runs. And so if we take a measured look at this top through to the bottom, there's 34 days. Let's take a look at the market from this previous top because that was the first scary time. We had three big days down. So if we say that's where the market basically stopped in its tracks and it started pushing up again, but it didn't really go that much high from that top. That's why I'm using this one. 
Then we had 52 days, so nearly two months. Now let's take another measure and look at it from the absolute top until it broke its top again, 54 days. Now let's take a last look at this top where the market basically was halted in its tracks on huge volume. You can see the volume down here, massive volume because the volume's much less up here. So this top through to until the market broke this high again, which is that bar, 72 days. So basically, I'm looking at 50 to 70 days after the first massive run up. This is a huge run from March into June. So three months like we've seen now, October, November, December. It's the first week of January. So three months, massive move up. And then basically 50 to say 70 days until it broke its top again. So if we took the lower end and said 45 days, a month and a half, six weeks, that's what I would be expecting after we see a top come in. Now we could be on the verge of this sort of day here, we could be on the verge of this sort of day here. So look at the volume high, we've seen something like that today where it's just pushed up a hell of a lot. That was a low of 2200 to 2400. Then we see this monster bar come in. Basically, be on the lookout for something like that. That's what I'm doing. You guys need to make your own call. I think, yes, we're gonna see something similar to that at some point. I'm hoping it's nothing like this that's gonna turn out and I really don't think it will because we're so far above the old all-time high. We still have a fair bit left in this bull market. And the reason being is probably the first piece of news I got here, uh, bitcoin.com. Uh, data shows 78% of the circulating Bitcoin supply is illiquid, meaning it's taken off exchanges, it's not moving anymore. It's about 14 million Bitcoin is illiquid. So there's 18 and a half million so far out there in circulation. There's still another two and a half ish million to be mined over the next hundred or so years. 14 and a half million of that is just sitting in wallets, illiquid, not moving. There's only about 4 million Bitcoin moving around. So although there's a circulating supply of 18.58 million, there's actually not 18.58 million floating around out there. And so I brought up on yesterday's video, Bitcoin flips Buffett, that I would be concerned if I saw one of these major wallets start to uh, unload Bitcoin. And so we know that Satoshi Nakamoto back 2010, thereabouts, had some of those wallets where there was about a million Bitcoin just sitting there and have not moved in about 11 years. And so if that started moving around, then that would add a million to this circulating supply, constant circulating supply, which would increase the constant circulating supply by 25%. Just doing some quick maths there. We have 4 million so far, we add another million to that. If the million all came out at once, of course, it's probably not going to happen. But there is about that 25% sitting there in Bitcoin, which has never moved. And so adding 25% supply to the already constant circulating supply would probably do a lot to the price. This is all hypotheticals, but I like to keep it in the back of my mind in case that starts to happen because that would probably be one of the catalysts to dump the price uh, from some sort of bull market top. Uh, it's not going to be some news of it. I, I, it could be news of countries banning it or regulating it really heavily. But I think if you add 25% to the circulating supply, I think that is going to have catalyst on bringing price down more than some sort of regulation to a decentralized currency, which is still trading out there in the market. All right, let's move on. Andre Antonopoulos forecasts what's next for Bitcoin ahead, warns global economic calamity ahead. So uh, there's a little bit of discussion here. I love Andreas Antonopoulos. Uh, YouTube channel's great if you want to find out some just real information on Bitcoin, how to use it. So go and check his channel out, of course. And basically, uh, he's just saying here, I think currency crisis environment is going to reach levels that have not been seen in a hundred years. And all of the things we thought were stable and forever turns out were not forever and not stable. So if we get uncertain times, major uncertain times, then that's not good for Bitcoin. Like we saw with the COVID crash in March of 2020, when things became really unstable, that dumped the price really hard. Although we think it's some sort of uh, backup plan to the certainty out there or to the uncertainty out there, I should say, uh, Bitcoin is a backup plan. It's not nearly there yet. And uh, Andreas talks about that through this article here, just saying that there's only six 
billionaires, Bitcoin billionaires out there. This, that's not a space for a Bitcoin to, to sort of help and take over and you know take over as our reserve currency. It's not, it's not there yet. So we still need to go through some growing pains. Next on the list is Bitcoin worth 1 billion leaves Coinbase. So this adds to the liquidity crisis, institutions FOMO. Now I always take that with a grain of salt. How does this writer of Coindesk know its institutions? How does Omkar Godbol, Godboli, Bole, uh, know that it's institutions? There is some data to show that it could be institutions, but at the same time, we don't know for sure. And Ki Young Zhu, Zhu is saying it is institutions over here. Uh, let's have a read through some of this. We could see institutions. Here we go. Institutions focused Coinbase Pro Exchange registered an outflow of 35,000 Bitcoin, uh, worth more than 1 billion early Saturday. So that may be the reason for the recent spike that we just saw over the last 24 hours. So as that news comes out uh, after institutions potentially that are buying this Bitcoin, then we see it on the chart of Coinbase Pro of the outflow of Bitcoin leaving Coinbase Pro. So that data just comes out on that one day there, but they're probably buying uh, OTC Bitcoin, Bitcoin over the counter throughout a decent amount of period to get that 35,000 into their vaults into their hands and then on the one day they transfer it out of Coinbase Pro into their other wallet so they do it all at certain times and they're not going to do it uh, little bit by little bit every single day so we can see that on the chart that's what it's talking about here the large outflow comes a day after 12,000 coins left so now they've taken off four total of 47,000 Bitcoin out of the circulating supply and the exchange represents institutional FOMO buying, according to CEO of Korea-based blockchain analytics firm CryptoQuant. So they do some analytics in the space. That gives some validity to the, the claim. Massive outflows from Coinbase Pro usually end in Coinbase's cold wallets for custody, which is directly integrated with the exchange's uh, OTC. Uh, institutions typically transact over the counter in a bid to avoid influencing the spot market price. So that's the assumption. That's what we're putting together here saying that it is institutions trying to buy a hell of a lot of OTC. It could be small family offices, it could be any of this, just trying to get their hands on Bitcoin without influencing the price too much. And then when they see these measures in charts like this through companies like uh, CryptoQuant, then I guess that's them FOMOing in more and more knowing that there is a lot more Bitcoin being scooped up than they're getting on the OTC, OTC desk I should say. So there's the uh, the, uh, the tweet itself and I just love that there's always more tweets through here as well. Cameron Winklevoss, obviously we know the Winklevoss twins who own a lot of Bitcoin. ETH was the best performing asset up 450% of 2020 hands down and still below its all time high. Today, it's the equivalent of 15K Bitcoin. I would take that bet all day long. Basically saying by ETH, by ETH, by ETH, by ETH. Next, this one is just talking about the price. So Bitcoin blasts past 33 grand for first time hours after blowing through 30. And that's why I think it, we're getting closer to some sort of blow off top. We've just done 10% in a day at all time high levels. That's wild. What, I mean, what does the average Joe expect to happen? Does he expect it to keep going 10% every single day from here? You keep increasing 10% on 10%, uh, you, you're just gonna get something ridiculously exponential until it pops, until it bursts a lot, massive. And I think we're on the verge of that now. What we looked at last time through uh, the bull market is every time we get these little pullbacks, they become shorter and shorter. So we saw the pullback at around the, the 19K level. And here's the first pullback. That's where the, the, we had some stopping volume at the top. I know that's the old, the, the top of the area, area here, but we got the top here. And then before it took off again, there were 16 days. So top to bottom, 16, uh, 16 days until we took off again. Now we measure the next move, which was about, there's the top, there's the bottom one day until it took off again, about four days. All right, so we went from 16 to four. We could measure it from this point because that's kind of the stopping volume. Look at that massive volume there. 
until it took off again, about seven, say seven or eight. So we went 16 to four or eight, then to two days. We can just count that with our eyes. We don't need anything more than that. One, two. Now we're going to see a one day reversal and take off again. Who knows? But essentially the reversing period has been halved every single time on the way up. Take note of that. Take note of these areas that the stopping volume's in. So we've gone 16. We've gone about four or eight, depending on where you're measuring from. We've gone two. If we see one, we see one. But it's getting shorter and shorter and eventually we come back, eventually. Where it comes to, I've got my alert set here, so we'll keep tracking it on the channel. With that said, if you do find value from the channel, let me know in the comments down below. What are you guys seeing? What do you like to look of when it comes to the news? What are you getting hyped up about? Which coins? And uh, have you been buying Bitcoin all the way up? Or are you still waiting for a pullback? At what price do you think Bitcoin will pull back to? Leave me a like down below if you do find some value from it. Let's move on to the last stories. Bitcoin options on Dairy Bet. Now, do you know what this is actually called? Dairy Bet. I don't know because the writer doesn't know himself. Dairy Bit. Dairy Bet. I don't know. They all sound like good names. Bitcoin options, they've listed options over 200 grand. So basically, you can put an option in to say that Bitcoin will be worth over 200 grand at year's end. So rally to 200 grand by late December. The options there if you want to buy it. So far, no one has bought any options, uh, any strike prices north of 80 grand. So, so far, people aren't seeing Bitcoin go over 80 grand by the end of the year. No one's willing to make that bet that it's going to be over 80 grand. All right, last couple of articles I got here is leading towards, uh, well, we just we just saw the liquidity crisis here. So data shows 78% is illiquid of Bitcoin. Now I'm going to take a look at Novogratz. Novogratz says there are a lot of contenders out there to be the payment gateway. Which cryptocurrency will win the payments race? Now we know it's not Bitcoin, so he's listed out here a few of them to his Twitter followers. DM, which has, oh, it was Libra, now it's DM, that's Facebook's coin. Bitcoin Cash, maybe just as a shitster, who knows? USDC or Tether. So what's the result? It was a mixed bag. <laughs> Sorry to disappoint. People are saying Link, people are saying ETH, people are saying Bitcoin Cash, hands down. I mean, who knows? A Bitcoin Cash's rate, it could certainly well be a payment gateway because it's not really worth anything. Sorry to the Bitcoin Cash holders. Look at the massive losses in your Bitcoin value if you were holding Bitcoin Cash. There was a peak at, what, nearly 5% of a Bitcoin. Now it's sitting at nearly 1% of a Bitcoin, all the way down here. Huge volume has come in. Maybe we're seeing some stopping volume, but I don't know. I don't want to take my chances on Bitcoin Cash just yet. I'd rather be holding Bitcoin. And in terms of its US dollar value, it's still pondering somewhere down beneath its, well beneath its all time highs and still below, below 500 US dollars. So it is starting to scoop up. Uh, we, we're seeing volume at the tops. And so that's not giving me confidence that we're going to see a breakout just yet. Uh, so I just stay away from Bitcoin Cash. That's the news for today on Bitcoin. We have looked at Bitcoin charts. Where is this top coming in? That will be the last thing that I'll give to you guys who have stuck around that long. Now, I'm gonna to go to my weekly chart. This is just for an intermediate top, all right? Intermediate, not the all time high, none of that. All right, let's put onto a log so we can see what's going on here. We are going to get rid of the volume as well. Close that. They're just alerts, those orange lines. Using our fib, connect to the low of 2015. Now I'm bringing it to the previous all-time high, the bull market high of 2017. And uh, I like this range because it's using, it's bouncing really well with the 50%. So we want to see it working previous to the market moving up so that we know that the market is liking these ranges. So 50% was was a resistance and support level, 9,900, definitely in there. 12,200, definitely a resistance area throughout this entire accumulation period. 38%, definitely a support zone, a break, and then a retest and bounced above. And then the 23%, definitely uh, an absolute mega zone as well. So this is working really nicely. 
and the 161% level is 31,700. So it's blown through that by a couple of grand, not a, not a lot. So I think this could be, that's why I'm also saying this could be uh, an, an, a good area of resistance. It's not saying it's gonna end here because the week ends tomorrow. If it closes under that, then I'm like very sure that this is where we're gonna go with it. But uh, it, could, it could spend another week up here and then start to make its way down and find another support. Areas above this, which are, we're gonna keep a track of, uh, 51K, 71K, 90K, 110K, we'll figure it out as we get closer to those points. But we also wanna see 50% of these levels as well. So, uh, so the halfway point between these levels, which is almost those psychological levels anyway, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, it's, it, it has worked out very nicely. So let's keep an eye on this, see where it goes from here. What am I doing? I'm waiting. I'm not buying Bitcoin because I may be in a very, very different position to you, uh, being that I bought a lot of Bitcoin through here, saw the dump, got a little bit ticked off, but luckily I could buy a little more through the 3K and then a lot more in the 5K area as it broke out. So I'm in a different position. I've got my stashes from here, from here. I FOMO'd in, bought some at 13, doesn't look so bad now and all that sort of stuff. But if this is your first chance to buy Bitcoin, it's very difficult to sit through these peaks and just wait and wait and wait for a pullback. So let's stick with it, see how we go from here. I definitely think we've got somewhere to come back. That's what we'll catch up with on the next video. Thanks guys for sticking around. Thank you for watching the Bitcoin news on my channel. Got links down below if you wanna purchase yourself some cryptocurrency in Australia, New Zealand, using Aussie dollars, New Zealand dollars, US dollars as well. Swiftex is down there. Independent Reserve is down there as well. Go and check those out, sign up, do your thing down there. $10 of free Bitcoin if you verify your account. Like, share it with someone who is getting into Bitcoin. They don't understand what the purpose, what the meaning of Bitcoin is. That's what I'm putting the fundamentals in for so people can get an understanding of what Bitcoin is. And of course, we stick with the technicals to tell us when is a good time to buy and sell after reading all of the fantastic FOMO news. Hope you had a fantastic day wherever you are in the world. I'll catch you at the next video. Daily videos as best as possible, maybe twice daily. See you at the next one, guys. Until then, have more fun to get more done. Peace out.